When I was first learning flint napping, one of the biggest problems I had was actually getting my arrowheads thin. I would start off with a nice piece of stone, fairly large size, and I would keep trying to thin it down, but part of the problem was it, it would just keep getting smaller and smaller, but wouldn't get progressively thinner. The thickness to width ratio would basically stay the same. So I've gotten a lot of questions from people here on the internet about how do you get your arrowheads thin. So that's what we're going to address in this video. You know, looking back, I think one of my biggest problems with that was the fact that I was too timid to actually set my edges up correctly. When I got a piece of flint, I just wanted to make the biggest arrowhead possible, but I didn't sacrifice enough edge in order to set them up correctly in order to drive the flakes far enough to take off the mass that I wanted to. So in this video, I've got a couple pieces of Texas flint that were given to me by my friend John Kiernan. So thank you, John, for the stone. We're going to attack a couple pieces here. I'm going to show you how I set the edges up and how to drive those flakes a distance to really shape and thin those points quickly. First thing you want to do is view the point from the edge all the way around. You want to see where are the thickest areas. Whatever's thickest, you want to take that off first. Now, looking at this, I see that this portion here looks like it's the thickest. And we want to drive some flakes in there to thin that out. Actually, this kind of this whole side is probably the thickest. It's fairly even, but that's where we want to remove mass first. Now, one of the most important things is your how you're going to access the thickest area of the stone. Now, one thing you always want to remember, and this is a simple way to, to remember it, is flakes always like to go over a hill. They want a nice, smooth, rounded surface. They don't like to go in any holes or any dips. Now, if you can find a ridge, follow a ridge and go over a hill, that's another great way to remember it. But always go over a hill or follow a ridge and go over a hill. So anywhere where there's any dips in the stone is not gonna work. You don't wanna send flakes in that way. So the first thing we look at is we're looking at this, this area here, this thick portion, and you're looking for ridges and you wanna see how the edge surface and the edge contour is. Now I see right here, I've got a nice strong ridge and if you look at it, you can see it's kind of rounded. It's not got any dips in it or any concavities. So one of the things I can do is I can set this edge up to drive a flake to follow that ridge. Now this is the point where we're gonna set our platform up. Now if you see, you can see it's not really set up right. It's, it's got this weird corner and basically what we want is a beveled edge that will angle to this side so that we can strike it and when we hit it that flake will carry follow that ridge so this is our point and this is where we want the flake to come off of so you're you're basically working kind of upside down the, the surface where I want the flake to come off is going to be facing me and it will always be facing me until I flip it over and then I strike and that's so you kind of have to work you're sort of working upside down but it's not hard it's not a hard concept to comprehend once you you practice with it a little bit so what I'm doing is just taking short flakes and as I do this now suddenly look at this now this is the ridge we want to drive that flake down and if you notice you look right here you can see that that edge now is angled it's um, it's beveled to that side so this it's got a slope to it that is the platform that's what you want to aim for whenever you're flint napping now if you also look you can see where this is and if we drive if we're going to drive that ridge see how it's rounded there's no there's no concav there's no uh dips in there or concavities it's, it's very rounded in here so what we're going to do is we're going to end up striking here and that flake will follow this ridge and come off and take a lot of mass off of there. Now, in preparation, I want to grind that edge. I want it to be fairly dull. I don't want any sharp edges. It makes it easier. Uh, it, it requires more energy to take that flake off. The more rounded the surfaces are, the more energy it's gonna take for that flake to come off. And that's important because you need enough energy behind that flake that when it detaches, it will carry. 
and go as far as you want it to go. So, okay, there's our platform. Slopes down at kind of a 45 degree angle, I guess. I'm gonna strike on this corner right in here and push that flake, take that ridge off. Now, I want you guys to take a look at that. This flake actually went a lot further than I had intended it to go, but that's okay. Now look at how far that went and look how much mass that one flake took off of that piece of stone. That is the important thing right there that you want to do. You want to set your edges up correctly. Take as much time as you need to, if it's a minute or two minutes, to get your edges correct and get your make sure your surface contour is correct. And when you do that, you can see how far that flake went, how much it took off struck right here went all the way along that ridge all the way to the other side that right there is a lesson in setting up your edges correctly now you see how much mass that took off now we want to look at our piece again and see where is the thickest area what's protruding out the most and right now it's this little Point. Now that's not really going to require much to take off. Just strike on this edge, knock this off, and that'll be that'll be uh, even. But as I can see right here, this is the thickest part. So that's what we need to remove first. That's not going to require a whole lot. Just a few little brushing flakes with the hammer stone. And it still looks like this area here is still a little bit thick, just a little bit. Well, I took that flake off of here, that previous big one. Well, I've still got a little bit of a remnant of a platform right there. Got a little bit of a remnant of that platform. This was where I took the first hit, which took off that massive flake, as you can see. Um, so now we can use the remnant to that platform to drive another flake that will follow that and take that ridge off. Gently brushing this edge back. The other thing too you want to always look at is what is this surface doing? Where's this flake? Where it comes off? What's it doing? It looks like it's slightly rounded. Remember, the flakes always like to go over a hill. When you're looking at them, now remember, you're looking at this from upside down. When you strike it, you're actually going to be striking it this way. But when you're looking at it upside down, to check that surface contour, it's slightly rounded, which is exactly what you want. Same thing again. I'll ground that edge. I'm going to strike it with my antler billet right there and push that flake I'm going in the same direction as that ridge. And you can see exactly, that's exactly what it did. It actually skimmed along that ridge, took it off. Again, one quick strike is all it took to remove that mass. And you can see how far these flakes are traveling. That's the key. When you can get them to travel far like that, you're not losing that much edge size off of the edge, but you're really, you're thinning your piece down this way much quicker than you're making it skinnier and smaller. Okay, we'll look at it again. Now, where is the thickest area? It doesn't really look like there's much that's overly thick. It looks pretty good as far as even thickness throughout. I think maybe what we can do is we could take another flake right here off of this ridge. I've got a, a sloped edge right there. All I have to do is grind that and strike that platform and that flake will detach up underneath there. So that's what we'll do next. Now of course that edge is really sharp. So I want to grind it. And see what I'm doing is I'm grinding this. 
pushing it away. Taking off little micro flakes. Now again, let's look at the surface contour. Where's this flake gonna come off? When I flip it over, I'm gonna be hitting it here. So the flake is gonna detach underneath. But, what's it doing on this side? See, it's rounded. It's pretty rounded. Now, it does dip a little bit down in here. But what this flake will do is probably travel and it will follow this ridge. Might come out a little bit into here, might take a little bit more off of that side, but that's what we want. We want to at least run this ridge and take that off. That will thin this portion out. Okay, I'm going to strike it right on that point, put my finger underneath to support that flake. One quick decisive blow and again remember what I said it's gonna follow this ridge and look what it did that's exactly what it did it followed that ridge I said it would come out into here probably and that's exactly what it did okay now we look at it again from the edge where's an, a thick spot that we can take off some more mass we, we, Really, there isn't any really overly thick spot. It's, again, still fairly even in, in thickness. So we have some options here as far as where we can go. Now, when you're doing this, and once you get your, your preform in an even thickness from tip to base, what you want to do is you want to kind of get the idea of where's your tip going to be and where's the base going to be. Now, I'm looking at it this way, and probably this will be my tip. Down here will be the base because it's naturally a little bit narrower here towards the tip. It flares out towards the base. That's normally an arrowhead shape. So when you start getting to this point, what you want to do when you set your edges up is you want to take flakes off of the tip and the base first. You do not want to thin the center. So if you leave the, the center too thin, take a couple flakes in there. I know it's tempting to do it, but if you thin that center first, then you've got a thin area and you've got all this weight out on the edges and it becomes very precarious because it's very easy to break it. What happens is the vibration of any further additional strikes will cause that center to start to wave like that. And if you've got weight on each end, it can, it, it can exceed the, the breaking strength of the stone and it will break in half. So you always want to thin the tip and the base first, then thin the center, and do that sequence. Tip, base, center, tip, base, center. Always remember that. So now that we've got this set up, we can basically just look and see where we're gonna drive some more flakes. I've got a chalky area here with a little bit of the outside exterior of the stone. It's this chalky cortex, which I don't really like. Can't really chip it, so easiest thing to do is to remove it. You can see how it's chalky, it's kind of flaking away. It's pretty dusty too. You can do this, of course, with the hammer stone as well. You see, every time I take a flake off, now I've got that sloped edge, that beveled 45 degree angle. Grind it a little bit there, because I want that flake to carry. And you can see what that flake did. Followed the ridge again, and it went over a hill. Now these flakes, I'm not trying to drive them very far. I'm just blending and shaping this edge. You see, I'm not doing a lot of edge preparation right now because I'm not intending for these flakes to go that far. I'm just working into the stone. I'm actually tilting my edge back because a lot of what you do with flint napping is preparation for just a few large flake removals. Trying to get your edges correct, get your surface contours rounded so that one or two flakes can take off the vast majority of the thickness. Now 
And here we've got a natural platform set up. This is what you want. See how this edge is at an angle? It's straight, it's smooth, there's no ridges in there except for that one ridge right there which we'll avoid. But look again underneath, look at the surface contours, those flakes will travel over a rounded surface. Of course I'm, we're looking at this upside down but slightly rounded surface. It's going over a hill and it's following ridges. There's a ridge right there. You can see these ridges. Once you start to recognize them, that's what you want to try to aim your flakes down. They really like to follow ridges, but they always like to go over a hill. So follow a ridge, go over a hill. And when you, of course, when you flip it over, it's upside down. But when you're preparing your edge, it's almost always going to be the side where the flake is going to come off is going to be facing you. So now we've got this edge here several platforms. We'll go grind this and then drive a few flakes in. Feel that edge and make sure it's dull. I'm going to strike here first because this is going to be the very tip of the point and I'm going to drive and follow this ridge here. Again, see how far that flake went. Just one quick strike. And I didn't lose a whole lot off of that edge. Almost nothing. But look how much it took off of the surface, the flat surface of that piece of stone. It's all about setting up your edges correctly, getting your surface contours correct, and then striking it correctly with enough force and at the correct angle that the flake will come off. And it's basically, that's it. You just, once you know what it takes to make a good flake, you just keep repeating the process, aiming these flakes wherever you want them to go. There's another platform right here set up. It's already ground. We've got a ridge right here that it will follow. Probably come down this way a little bit too. It's already been ground. I'll grind it a little bit more just to, for good measure. I'm looking at it from here. I can see that that surface contour is rounded, which is what we want. So you want your edge set up correctly, you want your edge ground properly, and you want your surface contour to be round, slightly rounded. I'll strike right here, finger underneath to support the flake. One quick decisive glancing blow should be all it takes. Okay, just like before, now we look at it from the edge and see where is the thickest area. We got what looks like the thickest area back in here. We've got a large ridge, it's rounded. So all I have to do is set my edges up, one of my edges to lean to that side here and then drive that ridge, knock a flake off there. What I'm gonna attempt to do, I think, is drive a flake from one side all the way across this surface to take that ridge off. I'm going, I'm looking at it from the, from the front here. You see this is, it's pretty rounded. I don't see any, really any dips in it. It's kind of thins out here and then it goes into this thicker area. So we're gonna set a, a platform up on this side and I'm gonna to attempt to punch one all the way across the surface of this thing and see if I can take off this tall ridge. Now first things first is I'm going to back flake it as though I'm setting up a platform. However, I want this right in here to be a little bit more rounded. I need it to be stout. So I'm going to flake it the other, other way. Again, these are short flakes because I want this right here to be almost like that. I want it to come up and be thick and stout. I don't want it to be gradual because I'm, I really want some, some beef in here. The more mass I have on this side, right behind this edge, the more force it will be able to handle. The more force, the more energy, the more energy, the further that flake will go. But this edge is going to have to be stout.
I want that flake to come off on this side here. You can see I've got a little a funny little bump here, thick stout area. I don't want that there. So I'm gonna take the pressure flaker and just carefully remove it. When you're really prepping your edge for some heavy flake removals, you gotta, you gotta take the time to prepare your edge correctly. That's the most important. And a lot of what you do with flint napping, like I've said before, and I'll repeat it again, is most of your time is going to be spent preparing your edge. Getting your surface contours right. The flake only takes a millisecond to detach once you strike it. But if you have to spend a minute or two minutes to set that edge up correctly, that's the most important thing. Very short, steep flakes. I don't want to thin this edge down. I want it to be thick and stout. Okay, here's my prepared platform. This is where I'm going to strike. You can see it's a steeply beveled edge. It's not, it's pretty thick right in there. Got a heavy bevel. The edge is robust. And also look at the surface where this flake is going to come off. See how it's slightly rounded and it will travel across the surface of this point and should come hopefully all the way to here. I'm really grinding this one heavy. I want that edge dull so it takes a lot of energy for that flake to break free. More energy is behind it, the further it'll go, as long as the surface contours are correct. It's a good stout platform, and that flake should travel all the way across to there. Well, see, we haven't lost a lot of size, but if this one goes, it's going to remove a big flake right in here and really thin this down. Now, this is also another thing where you can't be timid. You really have to smack these things if you want that flake to carry. And this, again, all comes with practice and competence that you get with years of setting your edges up and just practice. A lot of this is done by feel. So I'm really going to hit this thing. Not super hard, but I mean, as far as percussion blows go, this is gonna be probably one of the biggest ones that we're gonna take off of this point. I want the angle to come in like that. I want my follow through to go slightly underneath the point. So when that flake detaches, it's got that inward energy to carry. Got my finger underneath there to support that flake. I want it to stay together. And I'm really gonna hit it. I'll rub it like that. It's just something I do just to sort of get the feel. Maybe a few practice swings. And here we go. Now look at that flake. Look at how much mass that one flake took off of there. That's why I say when you do this, the vast majority of what you're doing is you're just preparing your edge. Is edge preparation and edge contouring, and once you get it right, shoot, you could make a spear point out of this, you can make a, an arrow point out of this flake, you could use it for butchering an animal, but that took off a ton of mass. But look at how much surface we lost how much actual size. I mean, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. But when you look at it from the side and you see how much mass that took off, that's how you thin points quickly. Now we're back to looking at the edge again. Where's our thickest areas? Looks like actually this whole side is the thickest, this edge. We haven't taken any flakes really off of this side. Most of the flakes have all been taken off of this one side, nothing off of here. So 
this edge is going to have to be thinned down. But because we've taken so much mass off of this one side, these flakes are just going to be really short. They're not going to have to go very far. Take the hammer stone. I'm going to dress this edge. Now this is where our flake just came off of. So I've got a slightly square edge here, so a little bit from one side, then flip it over. Take it from the other side. Flake's not coming off, so we'll come back this way. There we go. You hear me say that over and over. If the flake is not coming off, something is not right. You're not hitting it hard enough. Your angle is not correct. Something's not right. Okay, here we've got one spot here. I'm going to took another flake off there using that edge as a platform. This is where accuracy is also very important. You really have to hit exactly where you want. That's, a, that's another thing that you're going to have to develop over time is edge accuracy, your striking accuracy. I'm going to use the corner of this billet and I'm going to strike right on that little point. Look at what that did as far as following that ridge. And, look, and notice too, when I, you flip it over like that, it's going over a hill. It's always going over a hill. Follows the ridge, goes over a hill. Taking some short blending flakes. Flip it over, take some short flakes the other way. Just short little flakes, nothing serious, nothing to travel any distance. I just want to work off this square edge here. Now this one is going to require a little bit more energy. If I'm working into some mass, but I don't want to hit this with a, I don't want to hit it with an antler because I don't want that flake to really carry. All I want to do is take off this sharp ridge and corner. So grind it a little bit with the hammer stone and strike down. I, I didn't get a good enough bite. Try it again. There we go. A little bit better. I'm coming back the other way now, doing some brushing flakes. Didn't quite do what I wanted to, so I'm going to come at it again from, not from here now, but from over here. Took a little bit off of there. But, now we've got this sloped edge here. So I come from the other side. We'll flake off. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just working this edge down, doing the zigzag pattern so that this edge is now usable. We can set platforms up on it and drive flakes from this other side. Yeah, it's a little bit of blood on there. Stuff is sharp. There we go. Now, what was once a thick square edge, it's 
a little bit battered, but you can see now that we've got a, we now have a sharper edge that we can set up platforms. Now we're back to looking at it again from the edge. And this is all you do. You just keep looking to see which are the thickest areas. Now I can see it's, it's fairly thin back in here, but now we've got a little bit of extra thickness in here. So we need to set some edges up to drive some flakes in here and thin this out. Now you can, you can send flakes on both sides, but what I do is tend to look at the profile and see which is the flattest, straightest contour. We've got a little bit of a kind of a downward, a little bit extra mass on this side. You see this, this plane is fairly flat, but on this side, it's got a little bit extra mass on this bottom side. So I'm gonna take advantage of these natural platforms here, punch some flakes up on this side and, and flatten that out, remove that excess mass so that we have a nice straight, flat, thin profile for a point. Okay, those edges have been ground. Same thing as before, I'm looking at it, where's this flake gonna come off? Is that, is that edge dull? Is it sloped to the right side? Yes, it does. This is uh, fairly rounded so that that flake will go through and detach cleanly and feather out. You don't want any step fractures if you can help it. So keep my finger underneath, support the flake. And didn't, I didn't get a good bite on it. The flake did not carry as far as I wanted to. It's all right. I'm gonna try another one right here. But every time you see when I knock that flake off, I sharpen that edge. It's too sharp to hit, it's too weak. So now I want to dull it like I just did. Now I'm gonna strike on this point here. That was a beauty. Now look at how far that one went. Again, see how far that flake went, but how little off of the edge we actually lost. Now yeah, we did have to sacrifice some size to prep that edge, but look. It's just a flat, thin flake that takes off so much mass, thins the point down, but you're not losing a lot of size this way. And that's the key to getting your points thin. You see this piece is definitely thinning out. So I'm gonna stop talking since I've shown so much, to talk so much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch gears here and go a little faster. A ridge here, a little uh, point, ground the edge. I'm going to strike it now. I don't like the way that feels. I can just feel a lot of vibration coming out of there. It's wanting to break the piece. So instead, I'm going to strike with a hammer stone, which doesn't give as much vibration as the antler does. It's a sharp, sharper but shorter burst of energy because it's harder. So I'm going to strike on that point and drive that flake underneath there. Boom. We did lose a little bit more off that edge, took a little bite out of it, but you're gonna have to sacrifice some size, but you have to set your edges up correctly to be able to aggressively thin a piece. Now, what I'll do is back flake this, I'm going to strike right in here. I don't you know what, I don't like the way that is. It's that kind of bit that edge out a little bit. It's all right. Sometimes you do it. You just have to correct your mistakes move forward Got another little edge right here nice sloped edge this flake is not going to travel that far so i'm going to hit it with the hammer stone got a ridge right here that i don't like so i'm back flaking when I grind in there like that, grinding that off, really scrunching that stone in there is 
Marty Reuter says, and it, it takes off little micro flakes and really steepens that platform, strengthens it. I'm gonna strike there, flake will come off on the bottom side. You see now this piece is really starting to thin out. You remember what we had before. We really haven't lost that much size, but man, that thing is thinning out quick. We'll remove this. Got some chalky cortex on this back side. That I don't like, don't want. Got a little overhang here. You can see it's it's very thick. It's got a steep edge, but there's really nothing behind it. See how that there's nothing behind it, so you don't want to strike that because there's no mass there. So I want to take this off. Work that edge off. Now I'm back to just short blending flakes. I'm working back into this edge a little bit, into more mass. Looking at it from the side again now. Where are my thickest areas? Well, it's, there's a few little thick spots, but overall it's pretty evenly thin. Don't have any really thick, massive spots on it. Let's see right in here we got a little bit of a lump that I want to remove so flip it over again working upside down this is where I want the flake to come off so I'm doing these short little brushing flakes and I've got my angle tilted back like this I don't want it straight up and down I do not want to thin that edge I want that edge to be thick Grind it. And that's where the flake came off. Do another one right next to it there. Another one right here. Another one. I'm really accurate with my strikes though. This is where it's really important that you hit exactly what you want to hit. Because if you don't, you bash that edge, you can screw it up, and then you're going to have to sacrifice size to make up for your error. Now, got a little bit of thickness back in here, I can see. When I do this, and I'm grinding, you can do the same thing with pressure flaking. This is just a quicker way to do it. Pressure flaking is a bit more precise though, and will give you a little bit cleaner of a, pr of a platform. Sometimes if I need to do it, I will. If you see me back flake like this, where I'm actually pushing the flakes away from me, what I'm doing is I'm rounding that surface contour. You see me if I if I flake this way and then I flake down and then I flake back again. I'm slowly working into that stone, but very with very short, steep flakes because I want that edge. I want that edge to be more steeper and rounded. Back flaking like this. Cleaning it up a little bit. 
It doesn't hurt to do a little pressure flake in here. I'm gonna just do that a little bit. Just take off some of these chewed up areas, clean it up, makes it easier to see what I want to do and also to set my edges up. Again, looking at it, we've got some we've got some thickness here in the base which I would like to remove. This side is protruding out a little bit more than it is on the other side in terms of the plane of the point. So, and some short, steep flakes. Grind it. Now I'm gonna strike it with the hammer stone. Could do it with antler too, but It's taking out some of that steep edge. We can come right next to it. Strike off another one. It's a shorter flake, but I'm trying to get in that little divot right in there. I want to strike right in there. Yep, I hit it, but it didn't detach. I don't want to keep striking that either. Setting up an edge platform here, I want to take a flake off of this side. Got a little bit of a lump there. So instead of using the hammer stone, I'm going to do it with pressure because it's more precise. And I can end up with a cleaner platform. Just taking off very short, steep pressure flakes. Working into that edge. Working a little bit into that stone. So a nice, thick, stout edge with a steep bevel on it. So I can really run some flakes on this other side. Really grinding that edge. Shut up! Shut up! Shut your mouth! Stupid dog. You're gonna die! Okay, I'm gonna drive this edge, strike here, and drive into this side. I'm 
Took a little bit of a bite out of that edge, more so than I wanted to, but a little bit. But again, look at how much mass that thing took off. Okay, I've got this edge set up here. Got a steep bevel, I'm gonna grind it, knock some flakes down here. Come up on this side a little bit more, shoot another one in there. Didn't quite hit that one as hard, I didn't want to. Again, we're looking at it from the edge to see where the thickest area is. And I see that it's actually right along this edge. This half of the point has got a lot of thickness to it. Yeah, it, all, it seems to bulge out on this side. So I'm gonna set my edge up on this side to send some flakes over this surface. And once I do, it's really gonna thin this piece out. Because most of it's getting really thin back in here. I'm gonna take some short pressure flakes. Because this, the surface I want this flake to come off of on this underside is not rounded enough. So I want short flakes to help round that off. And then I flip it over and I come back and take some more. You see my angle of my pressure flaker, I'm pulling away. I don't want to push in. I want very short, steep flakes. Now because this tip is fairly narrow, I'll try it with the I'll try with the antler billet. I'll try to strike right about in there. I'm gonna hit with that corner, so I've got to be accurate with it. Maybe a hit over here. Go hit like that and see what I can do here. Damn it. Happens to the best of us. But you notice I kept hitting that edge and the flake was not detaching. It was telling me something was wrong. And I think I know what, what it was, is that that platform was too heavy. I should have hit it with the hammer stone. I don't think I would have broken this had I hit it with the uh, hammer stone. But that antler, it just, it sends in more vibration and you have to do it, yeah, it's, uh, that's what it was. If I'd have hit it with the hammer stone, that wouldn't have happened. And you see how thin that piece got. I was well on my way. Just got careless with that edge. And that's all it takes. Also, too, notice, see how it was, it was a little bit thinner here, a little bit thicker there. You can see what I did. I hit that edge and I should have hit it with a hammer stone and it ended up being too thin on this back end and too thick on the front end so I, I broke my own rules and should have thinned that tip out a little bit more. And I hit it with the antler which the antler takes, sends more wave, more of a wave action through the stone. Had I hit it with the hammer stone, I guarantee it wouldn't have broken. I was kind of thinking that, I said oh, I should have hit it with the hammer stone but then I thought maybe I could hit it with the the antler billet, but no, that's what happens. It's okay. It's got now two pieces to make nice thin points from. That's where I was hitting with the antler. I'm gonna hit it with the hammer stone and see what happens. I guarantee you it's gonna that flake will come off. Yeah. See? 
I was a bit discouraged after breaking that piece, so I continued to work on the broken fragments into the evening. It soon got too dark to continue, but the next day I finished the two broken halves as well as one of the larger waste flakes into these three finished arrow points. They're fairly thin with straight even profiles and they possess edges so sharp they feel sticky when your finger is drawn across them. Keep in mind it's not necessary to make absurdly thin points. Thicker points are more robust and can withstand more abuse without breaking. But having the skill to drive flakes into problem areas is useful since it allows you to make points from thick, unusual pieces of stone that would otherwise go to waste. The key to flint napping is having the knowledge and skill to prepare your edges correctly and remove flakes cleanly. Once you understand that concept and acquire the skills to really control the stone, it's a lot of fun to challenge yourself by attacking odd pieces of stone to see what you can make. It's those kinds of challenges that help you excel in crafting razor-sharp points from a simple rock.